We welcome everyone to this 26th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Following are the parish community announcements. Today is the annual Life Chain. Please join us from 2 to 3 p.m. as Catholics throughout the city witness to the sacredness of human life. St. James Parish will stand on the north side of West Dodge Road starting at 80th Street going east, the same space as last year. Signs will be available at the site. See you there. The Knights of Columbus will be holding their Fall Harvest Festival Kids Party today in the Parish Center and School Playground. There will be food and games and inflatables for all ages to enjoy from 1 to 4 p.m. More information can be found in the poster located in the narthex or in the bulletin. <clears throat> this weekend, the St. James Pro-Life Committee is inviting all parishioners to participate in St. James 40 Days for Life Day of Prayer. <coughs> Excuse me, Sunday, October 7th, between the hours of 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. at Planned Parenthood on 93rd Street. Please sign up for an hour of prayer on the chart in the narthex. Three people or more are needed for each hour. Please invite your family, friends, and neighbors to join you in an hour of prayer to witness to the sanctity of human life. Thank you. Recently, you received a letter from Archbishop Lucas inviting you to support the Archbishop's annual appeal. Please give prayerful consideration to your response. Our parish's financial goal for this year's annual appeal <coughs> excuse me, is $110,000 and our participation goal is 14 or 34 percent, excuse me. Together with the help of the Holy Spirit, we can create a culture of unity, evangelization, leadership, and mercy. You should have received information for our Growing in God's Grace annual renewal in the mail. If you have not filled out your card, you can either mail the form or drop it at the parish office. Place it in the collection basket, or go to our website and fill out the information. Our St. Vincent de Paul group is asking for your help. Please bring in your new or gently used coats, hats, scarves, mittens, and gloves for children and adults, which can be given away for those people in need. Just bring in your items the week of October 8th and 15th and place your items in the green bins in the back of the church during this time. Thank you for your help. Our Catholic daughters are collecting diapers for families in need. You can bring diapers and place them in the narthex ne the next two weekends. <coughs> they are in need of size five and six in particular. All the diapers will be distributed to four agencies in Omaha. As we begin this celebration, we invite you to stand to give a nod or wave to those people around you. Before we introduce our celebrant, we ask that anyone who has a cell phone to please silence it at this time. Thank you. This morning our celebrant is Father Ben Boyd, assisted by Deacon Randy Grossi. Our opening song and gather, Change Our Hearts, number 414, Change Our Hearts, number 414. Son and the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. 
Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you emptied yourself to become human. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you were obedient unto death. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are exalted in the glory of God. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. God, who manifest your almighty power above all by pardoning and showing mercy, bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us, and make those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. For those children ages six through nine who wish to celebrate the liturgy of the word for children, please gather now with the leaders of the word. This morning. Dear children, the Lord be with you. Jesus, who is the Word, loves you. Listen to the Word of God and learn. Be children of the Word, leading the way for others to find Jesus. The people of St. James now send you forth in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.
A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, You say, the Lord's way is not fair. Hear now, house of Israel, is it my way that is unfair, or rather, are not your ways unfair? When someone virtuous turns away from virtue to commit iniquity and dies, it is because of the iniquity he committed that he must die. But if he turns from the wickedness he has committed and does what is right and just, he shall preserve his life, since he has turned away from all the sins that he has committed. He shall surely live, he shall not die. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, if there is any encouragement in Christ, any solace in love, any participation in the Spirit, any compassion and mercy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, with the same love, united in heart, thinking one thing. Do nothing out of selfishness or out of vainglory. Rather, humbly regard others as more important than yourselves, each looking out not for his own interests, but also for those of others. Have in you the same attitude that is also in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God, something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name 
that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, what is your opinion? A man had two sons. He came to the first and said, son, go out and work in the vineyard today. He said in reply, I will not, but afterwards changed his mind and went. The man came to the other son and gave him the same order. He said in reply, yes, sir, but did not go. Which of the two did his father's will? They answered, the first. Jesus said to them, amen, I say to you, tax collectors and prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God before you. When John came to you in the way of righteousness, you did not believe him, but tax collectors and prostitutes did. Yet even when you saw that, you did not later change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. Today, Jesus <clears throat> gives a comparison between two sons. One that says, the father first says to both of them, go out and work in the vineyard. And the first one says, um, I will not go. Well, I don't know if it's the first one. One of them says, I will not go, and then later has a change of heart and goes. The other one says, I will go then ends up not going. Integrity is very important. What is integrity? It's my words mean what, what my words mean. It's not ambiguous. Now we do this all the time as children. Ben, get off the couch, go mow the lawn. All right, yep, I'll do it. It's just not, I'll, I won't do it right away. But I'll get to it. I mean, no kids here ever do that, but other kids out there do that. Right? We say, yep, I'll get it done. This happens with spouses too. Yep, did you take that over to the, yep, uh, I'll do it. And it doesn't get done. Jesus encourages us to let our yes mean yes and our no mean no. Now, the son that says no and has a change of heart He's comparing to sinners. Because oftentimes when we hear the word of God that's challenging to us, we hear we're going to have to give up this sin that kind of brings me comfort and I like. I don't want to do that. I won't do that. But then later see the wisdom of what is being told to us 
we change our mind and say, man, they were right. I probably should do this. That's far better to say no at first and do it later than it is to say, yep, I'll do it and never get to it. Especially when it comes to salvation. Brothers and sisters, there's nothing more important than going to heaven. Nothing. And not everyone makes it. Father Boyd, I don't like that. Yep, I'm with you. I don't like it either. But Jesus says it over and over and over again. He warns us over and over and over again. Sin is so, uh, so important that he had to die to make it right. And so when we don't take our salvation serious, when we say, yeah, God, I'll get to that, we don't know the dangerous walk that we're walking. But Father Boyd, do you think, really think a good God who's all loving would send someone to hell? Yes. Because he said that he would do it. And you might say, but that's not fair. Well, the first reading, the Lord says, You say the Lord's way is not fair. Hear now, O house of Israel, is it my way that is unfair, or rather are your ways unfair? When someone turns, when someone virtuous turns away from virtue and commits iniquity and dies, it is because of the iniquity he has committed that he must die. That's fair. When I do wrong, I deserve wrong. That's just. If I don't show up for work, I don't get paid. Right? If I don't buy my wife a gift on Valentine's Day, I don't get a kiss. Right? There is cause and effect with the things that we do. It's fair. It's just. But, the Lord says in this, through Ezekiel, he says, if he turns from wickedness he is, um, and does what is right and just, he shall preserve his life. And he shall live and not die. Again, fair. As it says, we reap what we sow. So if we were to test ourselves right now, today, in this moment... If we were to grade ourselves on what the Lord expects of us and asks of us, which son would we be? Would we be, yes, Lord, I'll do it, and I don't do it, giving him lip service? Would we be the other son who says, no, I'm not going to do that, I don't want to do that, and I do it later? Well, hopefully, we're probably a mixture of both, but hopefully we would be like this son. Yes, Father, I will, and he does. He lets his yes mean yes, and his no mean no. Brothers and sisters, coming to a time where we can't play around with our salvation anymore. We can't. We either are with him or we're for him. This is why Jesus tells these Pharisees a very insulting thing. Tax collectors and prostitutes are entering the kingdom before you, not because they stay in their sin and there is no sin and there's no big deal and we're going to say that that sin that used to be called sin is no longer sin anymore. No. It's because they turn away from their wickedness. The prostitute stops being a prostitute and pursues virtue. The tax collector who steals from people stops stealing and and begins to be generous and live a life with the Lord. That's why they enter the kingdom of God, not because God renames sin. Conversion, metanoia, the encounter with the Lord that affects us so much that we change our ways. Sometimes I think we abuse, and I do this, confession. 
Sometimes I think we go to confession as my license to sin. I'll just go to confession. That's not conversion. That's not a change of heart. To truly take my salvation serious, I come before the Lord and say, Lord, I am so sorry for what I've done. And I'm going to do my best to never do it again. In the act of contrition, to amend my life, or to stay away from the near occasion of sin, to stay away from anything that would bring me to that place ever again, that's conversion. Brothers and sisters, it's not a game. I've heard Father Tom say that many times. This isn't a game. It's death, judgment, heaven or hell. That's it. Would a God really send me to hell? I went to church on Sunday. You bet he would if you chose other than him or if it was a facade. Let's pray for the grace. And I'm always preaching to myself. Man, Father Boyd, you're being hard on us. I'm always preaching to myself, always. Let's not make this a game. If I were to die today, what would happen? And I can scream all I want to the Lord. That's not fair. It's not going to carry any weight. If I turn away from my sin, if I pursue, pursue virtue, I will be saved. If I remain in my sin, if I turn from virtue, if I stay in that, I won't. It couldn't be any more clear. Let's pray for the grace of true conversion. To open our hearts to see his truth and his teaching, what he truly taught and believed and, and wants us to teach and believe. Let us take that into our life, not just in word, but in action. Let's let our yes mean yes and our no mean no. Let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now offer our prayers and petitions to our Heavenly Father. For our church, on the eve of a new phase in the synodal journey, that the presence of the gospel, alive and at work in her, may make her like the vineyard in the parable, a vital place where all men and women who seek meaning in their life find a place, a word, and a breath of hope. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the bishops and the participants in the Synodal Assembly, the proposals may spring forth from their listening to the Holy Spirit so that the entire people of God in a dynamism of communion may feel that they are truly participating in the life of the church and be living and attractive witnesses to the newness of the gospel in the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For us gathered here in communion with Christian communities throughout the world, that by tasting the goodness of the Lord that comes to each one in the body and blood of Jesus, we may receive from him a fresh view of our neighbor 
and be made witnesses to generosity in the world in which we live. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For respect for one another as we deal with abortion, that we consider life in the broad sense, honoring the sanctity of life from conception to natural death, and support the people and organizations working for children and families. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the souls of the faithful departed, especially Kathleen Hansen and John Romano, and for those who have no one to pray for them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the parishioners of St. James for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayer requests placed in the prayer baskets, and for the special intentions we all carry in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, you are truly the giver of all good gifts. We, your beloved sons and daughters, offer our prayers to you in confidence, for we offer them through Christ our Lord. As our gifts are gathered, please join us in singing, Remember Your Love, number 851 and gather. Remember Your Love, number 851. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. The praise and glory of his name for our good and good of all his holy church. Grant to us, O merciful God, that this our offering may find acceptance with you, and that through it the wellspring of all blessing may be laid open before us through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim.
Therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and George, our Bishop, and all those who holding to the truth and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, and counted among the flock of those you've chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. And with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, as a mighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. similar way when supper was ended he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands and once more giving you thanks he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead and glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, 
a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. With your spirit. Let's now share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. Stick in. God bless you. the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
During communion, please join us in singing All Who Hunger, found in your red gather hymnals, number 817. All Who Hunger, number 817. bringing communion to the homebound, please come forward.
though many are one body who share the one bread, go now to those members of our parish community because of illness, cannot be present with us this morning. Greet them in the name of the Lord and of his people gathered here. Share with them the Eucharistic body of the Lord and assure them that there is here a Eucharistic people who are united to them in affection and in prayer. Go in our name and with the Lord's blessing as you go. finish purifying, maybe close your eyes and speak with the Lord. Maybe ask him, what's the one thing in, the, in my life, Lord, you want me to change? Let us pray. May this heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us in mind and body, that we may be co-heirs in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his death who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Father Tom wanted me to read this, a special announcement, some good news for people of St. James. All right. Uh, it's official. We are moving ahead uh, with the total parish center renovation project. Final building plans will be approved, uh, have been approved, and the archdiocese signed off on the project this week. The uh, the product of almost two years of planning, hoping, dreaming, and praying will soon become a reality. Exterior work, uh, including site preparation and footings for expansion, will begin October 16th, and we will be removing all furnishings, equipment, stored goods, etc., everything, out of the parish center by October 9th. So if you're with a ministry and you have some stuff in there, uh, maybe get in contact with Deacon Duane. Uh, then workers can move in and begin the renovation process, creating more general space, added storage, an extended kitchen with pantry, a new and fresh uh, a, and a new fresh looking look to the center, including the entryway from the church and outside, as well as the new family room. Completion is targeted for no later than June first of next year. With good weather and no construction surprises along the way, uh, we could be celebrating our parish family in a new, updated parish center uh, early, even earlier. Uh, this brief announcement is just the beginning of what will be uh, ongoing an ongoing communication effort. Hopefully, in the next week or so, we will be sharing more details uh, regarding the project, the scope of work, uh, what went into the decision-making process and the financial plans. Then, on a regular basis during the work, uh, we'll feature construction updates and more. <clears throat> Last paragraph, promise. Meanwhile, uh, we'll all need to be adjusting to life without a parish center. Meeting schedules and locations might have to change, funeral luncheons and other events will be held at other locations, school and school traffic will be impacted. Uh, but Father, 
thinks that we're, we can all agree uh, these temporary changes will be worth the inconvenience. We've been praying for this project for, uh, from the beginning, and as we move ahead now, let us continue our prayers for the overall project, and let's also add prayers for our patients and especially for the safety of the workers involved in this endeavor. The Lord be with you. With you. Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's go then in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives. As we go forth, please join us in singing, They'll Know We Are Christians, number 728, and gather. They'll Know We Are Christians, number 728. <laughs> 